Liam and Emmanuel promote understanding and cooperation in a place where that can get you killed. We've seen a number of uh, peace builders associated um, with us um, lose their life. Emmanuel lives in northern Nigeria, right near the epicenter of the vast majority of violence. And he wakes up every single day and he goes to work in communities, working with Christians and Muslims, trying to bring people together. Both men work for the United Religions Initiative, or URI. Its mission, to promote respect and cooperation between people of different faiths. URI is unique as an organization in the sense that while we do believe dialogue is important, we go a step further by bringing people together through collaborative actions on problems that are affecting everybody. No man is an island. We can only be successful as much as we are working in a team. Together with other interfaith groups, URI is part of a growing worldwide movement. URI is a global network of more than 750 grassroots interfaith organizations called Cooperation Circles. Cooperation Circles are beautiful groups of individuals from different faith traditions, spiritual expressions and indigenous traditions working together to create change and transform their societies and communities. In Nigeria, Emmanuel founded a school whose students are a rainbow of the country's religious and ethnic diversity. The school is an island of harmony in a sea of conflict, particularly in a region where children are being kidnapped by terrorist groups. On this day, Emmanuel and Liam visit a local market. A few blocks away, one of Emmanuel's students was murdered two years ago by a terrorist bomb. And we had over 100 uh, people uh, killed here. You can see the impact. Of, uh, of the devastation even on the, on, the, on the roof. It was a terrible incident. Liam, you can have a look at the text message. Suddenly, Emmanuel receives a text message from security officials warning of yet another terrorist attack. We have been asked to stay away from crowded markets, churches, car parks. Luckily, the attack doesn't happen. At the market, more good news. After URI helped arrange a meeting between Muslim and Christian leaders, Christian traders once again are able to sell their goods after violent confrontations. If Nigeria is at a tipping point between hope and despair, there's no doubt which side Liam and Emmanuel are on. I've really been amazed that human beings are generally very, very kind, very compassionate, very wonderful. I feel that the vast majority of society here wants peace and wants change. My wish for the world is that all religious differences will be respected. My wish for the world is to stop bloodshed. My wish for the world is that there are no more wars and the pain that they bring. The stories of interfaith peace building that we have witnessed tonight call us both into reflection and action. In reflection, we turn inward as we consider the ways in which we might be more gentle and loving with ourselves so that peace might be born and nurtured in us. And in action, we evoke the golden rule that we should treat others as we would like others to treat us. This ethic appears in all traditions, and so we are called to care for one another, to work together side by side to better our communities and our world. The work is hard. The challenges are many. But this is our calling. This is our calling. A calling beautifully described by Dr. Howard Thurman in his poem, The Work of Christmas. Dr. Thurman was an extraordinary teacher, preacher, and writer in the African-American Christian tradition. He counted among his students Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. In the work of Christmas, Dr. Thurman calls us all to action in service 
of a more peaceful and just world. Melody Damore, tonight's musical director who composed many of the songs that we sang, joins me in sharing Dr. Thurman's words with you. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among all peoples, to make music in the heart. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. In the world today, there are so many hard things going on. But what we can do is decide to make that pledge that we will stand. Stand by your side, at your bedside, next to your shoulder. What you're going through, we're going to go through together. So when we do this, when you feel it, you rise. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. I will be your standing stone. I will stand by you. We stand by one another. People of all beliefs, all traditions, thank you for standing together this evening. And when the struggles of the world, the news of conflict and violence cast a shadow over your light, know that you are not alone, but part of a human family. People of all religions, all traditions working together for peace in our communities, and in our world. We return for a final song, a final moment of Christmas at the end of a beautiful evening. May you go in peace on this night and may peace fill all your days.
On this holy night, when Christians revere the birth of a baby who was hailed as the Prince of Peace, a big thank you to friends of other faiths who have brought their gift of graceful respect to this celebration, and a big thank you to viewers who were inquisitive about the prospect of peace amidst religious diversity. On behalf of the growing family of peace throughout the world, I thank you for watching. May peace prevail on earth. Amen.